In this mini tutorial, we're going to look at the subject of homonymous hemianopia. Uh, and we're going to use the same basic layout, basic layout as we used for the bitemporal hemianopia video, uh, but we're going to use a slightly different way of approaching it. Uh, and this is a, a relatively non standard way. Um, so listen carefully, and I hope that it makes sense um, at the end. So let's start off as we did before with labelling um, the left side of our image and the right side of our image. Remembering that when considering the brain scan, this left and right is reversed. Um, so we're ignoring the usual convention when looking at MRIs of the brain. Uh, and we're saying that this is the left half and this is the right half. I mean, the fact that it's an MRI doesn't really matter because all we're using this for is to simulate the patient looking out at the scene that we've provided. Now, we're going to diverge a little bit from the approach that we took with the um, bitemporal hemianopia video because what we're going to do is we're going to start off looking out at the scene, okay? And I'm going to show you um, about the approach that we're going to take. We're going to use blue in this case to represent the right half of our visual field, okay? So we're using blue to represent the right half of the visual field. So let's colour that in. So here's the right half of our visual field. And we're going to use this red to represent the left half of our visual field. Okay. Uh, and we're going to go kind of in reverse compared to the, the bitemporal hemianopia video because next what we're going to do is we're going to go back and look at the retina and look at which bits of the retina are looking at the blue and the red portions. So if we think about the right half of the visual field, the right half of the visual field is being looked at um, by the temporal retina of the left eye. Okay, so there's the temporal retina of the left eye, um, and we can see a light ray there going through the lens and looking at the right half of the visual field. And it's, the right half of the visual field is also being observed by the nasal retina of the right eye. Okay, so there, here's a light ray going from the nasal retina of the right eye to the right half of the visual field. If we consider the left half of the visual field, the left half of the visual field is being looked at by the nasal retina of the left eye. Okay, so there it is. And by the temporal retina of the right eye. So there that is. Okay, so this is the colour scheme that we're going to use. And I said it's different to the colour scheme we used for the bitemporal hemianopia case. Um, but it'll become clear that this is easier to understand than if we used um, blue for nasal retina and red for um, temporal retina. Okay, so in this case, blue is for right half of visual field, red is for left half of visual field. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw out the visual pathway. Here is the left eye, the left eyeball. Here is the right eye. So we're, we're still preserving that left and right that we have in the images on the right hand side. Here are the optic nerves crossing over at the chiasm. And here are the optic tracts. Here are the lateral geniculate nuclei. And here is the visual cortex, okay? Uh, once again, we're going to put our dotted line to split each retina in half, okay? Um, but we're going to use a different colour scheme for the neurons. So you'll recall that we use blue to represent the right half of the visual field, uh, and that the right half of the visual field for the right eye is going in at the nasal retina, Okay, so here is a blue neuron sitting in the nasal retina of the right eye, seeing the right half of the visual field. And you'll remember that this nasal neuron crosses over at the, at the chiasm, synapses at the lateral geniculate, and then that neuron projects into the visual cortex. Okay. Now let's draw on the neuron in the left eye, which is looking at the right visual field. And as we said earlier, this one is sitting in the temporal retina of the left eye, here, okay? 
This is once again projecting through the pathway into the lateral geniculate onto an LGN neuron, which is projecting into the visual cortex. Now let's draw on the neurons which are looking at the left visual field, and that's in red. So for the left eye, the neurons looking at the left visual field reside in the nasal retina. So there's a neuron in the nasal retina. It sends its axon through the optic nerve, past the chiasm and into the LGN. There, where it synapses. And then we project to the visual cortex. And finally, the neuron in the right eye, which is looking at the left visual field, resides in the right temporal retina, here. Which projects down through the optic nerves and into the LGN and projects to the visual cortex. So what you can see um, has happened is something quite convenient, actually. You can see that for the left visual field, in the case of the left visual field, the visual information projects along the red neurons that we've drawn and ends up in the right visual cortex. For the right visual field, in blue, this visual information passes along the blue neurons to the left visual cortex. Okay, So the take-home message from this video, effectively, is that your right visual field goes to your left hemisphere and your left visual field goes to your right hemisphere. Now that we understand this, we can simulate a lesion. So let's place a lesion here in the right um, optic tract. Okay, so here's a lesion in the right optic tract. Um, and what we can see is that this lesion in the right optic tract has destroyed the red axons, i.e. the axons which subserve the left visual field. So the lesion has destroyed these red axons, and those are the axons from ganglion cells in the right temporal retina and the left nasal retina, i.e. these are neurons subserving the left visual field. So in that case, our lesion there in green would lead to loss of the left visual field. Okay, So our lesion here in green would give us a left homonymous hemianopia. Likewise, uh, a lesion in the right lateral geniculate would give us a left homonymous hemianopia, as would destruction of all of the axons in the optic radiations emanating from the lateral geniculate. Okay? It gets more complex once we get into the optic radiations, and there's going to be a separate video on these. But the main take-home message is that a lesion in the optic tract or the lateral geniculate can lead to a contralateral homonymous hemianopia. Now, uh, one point that you need to appreciate, what, what does the word homonymous mean? Um, homonymous means affecting both eyes equally, okay? Um, and if you look, um, in the case here where we've got our green lesion destroying these red axons, if we assess the visual field of the right eye on its own, we would find that the right eye has lost the left visual field. And if we assess the visual field of the left eye on its own, we would find that the left eye has lost the left visual field. So homonymous effectively means both eyes affected equally. Okay. Uh, one final point, uh, which, those, which the more astute of you may have noticed, um, is how is it the case that Given that the left and right visual fields are separated in the two hemispheres, how do we generate a complete image? Well, the simple answer to that um, is that we have, of course, the fibres of the corpus callosum connecting the two visual cortices together. So it is the commissural fibres connecting the two visual cortices which allows us to generate a complete image, even though each half of our visual field is represented in a separate visual cortex. Okay, that's all I've got to say on this. Thanks for listening.